Blakey. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to our witnesses. I know um, <clears throat> I know that neither of our witnesses are, are in the business themselves, but there was some reference made to the annual reports of some of the companies that are engaged in installment loans. I'm just wondering if uh, the witnesses have a sense of like what what margins those companies are making when we're talking about profit. I know you had said that that those that that they're making more profit, but I wonder if you have a sense of the margin. If not, that's all right. I know we're going to be uh, I'm trying to talk to those companies as well, uh, as per the discussion at the beginning of today's meeting. So we'll be happy to get some of that information from them. I do have one more question along those lines, and if you don't know the answer, that's all right. As I say, we'll be talking to them as well. But I'm curious to know what the bad debt level for installment loans uh, is in terms of loans that they make that they don't collect on. I don't think that's publicly available to us, um, so it's hard to know. It's it's corporate information. So. Okay. Well, that's something we'll be asking the companies as well. Um, so the other thing that I want to just kind of narrow in on, there was some talk before about the ways that installment loans are marketed to Canadians, and of course there are industries where we have uh, regulation around what companies can and can't do in terms of advertising. So uh, I take the point on the need to lower the criminal rate of interest. It's something that New Democrats have been advocating for for a long time. But I wonder if either of, of you or either of your organizations have done some thinking around um, the ways that installment loans are marketed to Canadians and if you have any suggestions for whether that's a space you think there should be some intervention to ensure that when Canadians are receiving messages about the credit options available to them, that they're that they're made fully aware of, of what the consequences are, and that misleading uh, advertisement about what may be available to them isn't something that they have to contend with. Okay, should I go ahead? Yes, uh, please. When you go ahead, Bumika, and then I'll sure. jump in. Yeah, sure. Thank you. You know, definitely there's a lot that one can do in the installment lending space for sure, um, particularly because um, we know that there's no complaint mechanism at the federal level uh, in case a person wants to prosecute or, um, you know, ha take these, like, ask any questions or take these uh, lenders to court there is or even file a complaint there is there is no mechanism that exists and in our submission um, acon has said that we need a complaint mechanism at the federal level so that people have some uh, some sort of space where these uh, these issues can be taken to um, i'll also let donna speak about her experience um, about uh, her installment loan but I think one of the things that we've noticed is the like in the absence of air credit alternatives these lenders are pushing so for instance if a member has an uh, has a payday loan they're enticed to take an installment loan and a lot of our members have been enticed to do that because oh you you're paying regularly your payday loan why don't you take a five thousand dollar loan and in that vulnerable situation when a person needs money, this, this is exactly what you do. Um, and as Donna mentioned in her remarks, it is very, very difficult to understand the cost of borrowing. It's not about people who, that they're not financially literate. It's just that the numbers are so hard to understand. And on top of it, as I mentioned, there's insurance, there's late fees, there's a lot of things that are bundled into the loan that make the interest rate much, much more than 60%. Donna, in case you want to add Quickly something, on the, thank you. On the question of complaints, and then we'll go to Donna. I just wonder, one of the things um, that's happening now is government is going back to uh, a regime where we have one ombudsperson for making complaints about Canada's financial institutions. If I'm hearing you, you right, um, that that doesn't apply or it doesn't cover uh, payday lenders. Um, do you think that it should? Do I don't think, do think it would cover payday lenders. A different place uh, where people go to make complaints about payday lenders. Okay, well, do you believe it should be a different space for uh, predatory lenders because it, the way it works is different. So, I, I, yeah. Can I just, um, on this one, I think there's an issue of jurisdiction. Um, these fall under provincial jurisdiction. Um, and their consumer protection uh, regimes, uh, not the federal government's because they're not federally regulated banking institutions. 
I think, though, that there is a role for the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada to uh, to do research on effective practice in regulating the, this type of space as well, and to work with its provincial counterparts to try to build some commonality across and greater protection for consumers, uh, including a recourse mechanism um, that they can access. Um, but also, I think, uh, even if there were a standardized way that they pushed these uh, lenders to uh, provide simple, clear, transparent information on the true cost of their loan, not just interest, but all the other charges, insurance, et cetera, that go with that. And in our submission, we talked about the financial facts labeling uh, that the Mission Asset Fund has used in the United States very successfully. It looks like a, a food nutrition label, but it's a financial information. Um, and also the use potentially of having the Financial Consumer Agency have an installment loan, term loan uh, selector tool that inputs this information and allows consumers to compare different uh, installment uh, loans that are in the market and to select the one that best meets their needs. Um, in that way, when they did that with credit cards, it drove actual um, fees down uh, because uh, uh, consumers could easily compare them for once. Uh, and that immediately forced cards that weren't doing so well and weren't getting selected to kind of adjust their rates and their features to be more competitive in that. So if we could create more tools to help consumers uh, see clearly and be able to compare easily um, the rates, then that would go a long way to um, giving them more power to make good choices for themselves. Um, right now it's extremely difficult. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just with apologies to the witnesses, I want to put a motion on notice with the committee, so I'm just going to read that out before posing my next questions. The motion that I'm putting on notice is as follows, Mr. Chair. Given that the grocery sector has made more than $6 billion in profit in 2023 and that millions of Canadians have reported food insecurity in the last year, the Standing Committee on Finance call on the government to immediately take action by implementing an excess profit tax on large grocery companies that would put money back in people's pockets with a GST rebate and establish a national school food program and that this motion be reported to the House. So uh, thank you for your patience, witnesses, while I do that bit of business. And I just wanted to ask, you know, I mean, we've heard definitely of the importance uh, of the order. Appel, the appel au Point of order, Chair. Sorry, Danielle. The interpreters have told us that they have not received a copy of that motion. It's always useful to give them this, so it was not interpreted. Just uh, MP Blakey, if you'll distribute that, and uh, you know, if we can get also a uh, soft copy, electronic copy, also to uh, to our clerk, and he'll get that distributed. Uh, merci, MP Samari, MP Blakey. Répétez en français aussi. Étant donné que le secteur a réalisé plus que 6 milliards de dollars d'un bénéfice en 2023 et que des millions de Canadiens ont fait état d'insécurité alimentaire au cours de l'année écoulée, le Comité permanent des finances demande au gouvernement d'agir immédiatement en mettant en œuvre une taxe sur les bénéfices excédentaires des grandes entreprises d'épicerie qui remettra and we'll put money back in the people's pocket with a GST rebate. We've just received the motion now, so I've started reading it now. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to go through it one one more time. No problem. Yeah, okay, no problem. from the top, yes. Are we good to go? Yes, you're good okay. to go. Given that the Canadian grocery sector made more than $6 billion in profit in 2023 and that millions of Canadians have reported food insecurity in the last year, the Standing Committee on Finance call on the government to immediately take action by implementing an excess profit tax on large grocery companies that would put money back in the people's pocket with a GST rebate and establish a national school food programme and that this motion be reported to the House. Mr. Chair, and with what time I have remaining, I just wanted to uh, ask our witnesses We've heard for sure about the importance of lowering the criminal rate of interest. I'm wondering if there are some other measures that you haven't had an opportunity to share, either that would protect uh, Canadians from predatory loans uh, or to increase the, the uh, 
the non-predatory credit options that, that would be available to them. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. So, um, so we've been pushing for uh, fair credit benefit. That's uh, something that the federal government could do. Uh, that could be either administered by the banks or by a nonprofit agency, um, like um, um, uh, Ms. Malholan was uh, uh, was stating as well in her remarks. Uh, good Shepherd in Australia has been uh, uh, has provided a good alternative in the country where it was. Uh, it was supported by the federal government and administered by a non-profit agency. Um, so that that's, alternatives such as these could provide uh, fair credit to people who need it most. We are seeing uh, more uh, credit unions offering credit products. Um, we saw Duca Credit Union start a Duca Escalator loan recently. So there are these uh, these products that are becoming more and more available, offering uh, a payday, payday loan alternative. Um, we, we want to see more of such alternatives. Um, as I said, Canada Post TD loan product was a decent product. Unfortunately, it got discontinued. Um, we've also been pushing postal banking as an alternative because we believe that's something that could be uh, that could offer uh, people um, a fair credit alternative. Um, so there are such uh, alternatives that can be made available um, uh, rather than you know uh, giving. Uh, fringe lenders, uh, a free market uh, to exploit vulnerable people. Thank you, MP.